So in the last video, we covered deleting uh, entries in our database by simply passing in the ID that we got from the server from Unreal Engine. So in this video, we're going to be actually getting the connection, like the client's IP address that are making the request. And we're going to be using that in the future instead of the ID to delete entries. So the reason we're doing that instead is in case the client somehow managed to accidentally duplicate their entry, like something didn't quite work right or something along those lines, whenever they go to make a delete, like where they back out of the lobby, it's going to loop through any of their IP addresses, like uh, entries that contain their IP address, and remove them. So that should be a little bit of a uh, kind of a safe way to do it instead of doing the ID, as well as that'll make it so we can do a heartbeat. So what I mean by heartbeat is in the future, we might end up implementing one. So every X seconds or X minutes, we're going to be kind of gradually looping through the, uh, the what's it called, the entries in the data table and kind of like pinging them. So if we don't get a response, for example, then we know that the connection is dead and we can go ahead and remove it. So first off, let's go ahead and get our IP address. So I'm just going to modify the get and return it in here so that way we can test and see it. So what I want to do is string IP equals system dot web dot HTTP context dot current dot west dot user host address. Now I'm going to go ahead and return this and run it. Now, it's not going to be my public IP. I am hosting locally, and it's not even going to be my correct internal IP. But when someone connects from the outside, it should give their actual IP address. So I'm going to go ahead and make a get request and just do forward slash one and send. And here you can see is what it returns. What we need to do is do a check. So if IP equals colon colon one, then IP equals 127.0.0.1, like so. And now let's go ahead and run it again. So that'd be kind of like an indication that, okay, we're local. So now it returns the proper address. So let's go ahead and copy this up here. And I'm just going to remove it and go to database interface. Now I'm going to make a function. It's going to be public in their string get user IP address. And what it's going to return is essentially this. So return. IP like so. So now what we can do is in like post data for the IP address, what we're going to do is get user IP address. And anywhere else we'd go for that. I did remove it, didn't I? Yep. So now we will actually be getting their IP address and storing it into the server, I mean into the uh, database instead of us having to enter it manually. Because currently, when we do it, we're making our own here. So we can just leave that as 127.0.0.1. It's not really a concern. So now that should give us our IP address, and I'm gonna do a test by modifying this to just, just random numbers and compiling. So I'm going to relaunch the web API. Make sure I have no entries. And if it works, we should not see this number. We should see 127.0.0.1 when we create our server. OK, let's go to the database and refresh. And we see 127.0.0.1. So 
this should be filling up as intended. So now whenever we search for it, uh, like when we go through and we loop through all the entries, we should easily be able to find ones that are local to us. So for example, like they start with a 10 or a 192, for example, then we know that it is local and it is a LAN session. And we can just do little things like that. So yeah, now we have a way to get access to the connecting client's IP address and use it. So I will see you in the next one.